Hi guys. So, uh, Happy New Year. And uh, we start 2020 off with this, the Mazda CX-8. Uh, I've previously featured this video on my channel. That time we went to Kulim, Batuworth to attend the uh, line of ceremony from the Inocom plant. Um, that time we had a brief walk around uh, around the uh, display cars and also we had a quick drive around the uh, around the Kulim area but uh, it was th there was more first impression basis and uh, than an, any actual in-depth uh, look at the car so today here we have this is the 2.5 mid-class variant there are a total of three trim levels okay uh, there's mid as you see here with the 2.5 engine priced at 180,000 ringgit top up another 5,000 ringgit you get the mid plus model and then uh, further up is past the 200,000 mark is the high variant which you you can get it together with either the 2.5 liter petrol engine or the 2.2 liter diesel uh, personally, if you are, I've always argued that for a vehicle this size, you are always better off with the torque of a diesel engine. But then again, as I would explain when I, uh, when I do my driving impressions, um, this 2.5 is not bad, all right? It does the job. Uh, it gives the CX-8 respectable go. You certainly don't feel uh, driving an underpowered vehicle with this. All right, um, the 2.5 liter petrol engine is uh, available exclusively with front wheel drive. The diesel engine is paired with all wheel drive, um, which if you ask me, is a sensible setup. Okay, 2.5 liter engine has very nice, very linear power delivery. You don't need um, the extra cost of maintaining an all wheel drive system. The diesel engine on the other hand, with the kind of torque that it generates, you are safer in spreading your 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 traction over the four wheels uh, particularly useful in wet weather right so um what else so technically speaking right uh previously i said that this the cx8 is a long wheel based version of the cx5 and if you look at it from uh from the front end styling that's definitely the case okay this front end is almost like for like um a like for like rep, uh, recreation of the cx5's front but in actual fact the architecture underneath it's a narrow a narrow a narrowed version of the cx9 so if, if i bring you to the interior so you see the dashboard is from the CX-5, but the center console area, this is, um, well, this is not from the CX-5. This is, this, uh, this is taken from, not exactly from the CX-9, but it is closer to what you get with the CX-9. <coughs> so in terms of product positioning, the CX-8 here, it sits in between the CX-5 and the CX-9, but of course, it's closer to the CX-5. Um, and if you look at it from a purely product positioning standpoint, it is then easier to consider this as a long wheel longer wheelbase version of the CX-5. In fact, if you are currently a CX-5 owner, you are a CRV owner, you are you're owning any one of those SUVs in that uh, price point that 130 to 150 thousand ringgit price point your family has grown you want to upsize to something bigger this this here is actually a very um it's a very easy decision to make it is a very um convincing convincing choice okay and just because this is the lowest trim level on offer it is hardly poor. You get 19-inch wheels as standard. You get LED headlamps. Of, of course, this, uh, the mid-model here, you don't get LED daytime running lights. You get uh, bulb-type DRLs, but the main beam is still LED illuminated. You get keyless entry. Okay, but this is the, uh, what you call it, uh, this is the, the previous generation keyless entry, okay, from Mazda which you have to press the button to lock and unlock 
right? Uh, it's not the touch, the more it's not the more expensive touch type keyless entry. And uh, you come to the back, you get powered tailgate. You actually get powered tailgate with this. You get a reverse camera, higher spec variants, get 360 degree camera. And oh, somebody left the pack of of mummy here. Haha, <laughs> small snack for me. Okay, so here we have um, the rear boot. These are the seats folded down, the, the car operating in five-seater configuration. The middle row is already adjusted uh, furthest back, but uh, I'm surprised that they didn't arrange the seats in such a way that with the middle row furthest back, uh, they to close that gap there. So um, if you are using this as a five-seater, primarily as a five-seater, beware things will fall down into that gap so every once in a while do check underneath if your kids uh, have toys in there or any of your small shopping items may end up down there okay but i think that's a that's a relatively small matter if you ask me you've got two shopping hooks here uh the label here says it's uh, rated for a maximum of three kilograms one here one here you got a 12 volt socket um yeah, so underneath here, you've got a hidden compartment okay, which, uh, which you can store you can, you can stow away more things underneath here uh, Yeah, so here we have it This is the, uh, this is the, in the luggage space in 5-seater configuration Pretty decent Now if you pull this up Okay, it's, uh, it's still alright You can, some of the more compact Baby strollers will still fit here. Uh, suitcase may be out of the question. Lah. Maybe a cabin size suitcase. Um, golf bag, probably not. But your grocery shopping should all come in here pretty nicely. Alright, let's close this. And we come here to the middle row. Now, uh, what the other thing that separates between the three trim levels mid a uh, mid spec here gets you seven seater configuration if you go for the mid plus model you get a six seater configuration with a middle tunnel okay that was the variant that was featured in my uh, previous driving video and if you go the step up to the high variant what you get you still get two individual seats but a center console in there uh, as an armrest as a table uh, cup holder whatever you decide to uh, it's a multi-function armrest center console all right so up to you how to utilize it here we have this is the seven this is the seven seater configuration middle row adjusted all the way back and you can see right off uh, the bat leg room here is fantastic and you got you open an armrest down here this is the previous generation armrest that still has the two usb ports there all right, uh, you've got rear aircon blowers with dedicated rear climate control. Um, I'll show you the the seating, uh, what you call it, the, the seat fitment, the, the, my, the seating here later on. Let me just go to the back. And what did I just say earlier about, about people dropping things inside here? All right, so whoever that left that earlier pack of mummy left me another one here. All right, so let me just get in. All right, and pull this back. Okay, so um, of course, as with any seven-seater, right, uh, you come to the back, the third row, you're always compromised for space. And I'm 170 centimeters tall. My hair is touching the roof lining. Um, not much in the way of, of uh, thigh support, but um, leg room is good. Okay, let me just come over here where this seat is adjusted all the way back and show you. Uh, I've still got a decent amount of leg room, but maybe this, this piece here can be a bit of a hindrance. But still, yep, it's just enough space in there for me to slit my legs in. Uh, won't be too bad if I have to go on, if I were to take this, if I have to sit here maybe for um, KLPJ, but... If you tell me KL Penang, uh, no. All right, uh, got store, uh, store, storage and cup holders here. Nice. And uh, yeah, what do we have here? 
got these hooks here for you to put cargo netting whatever all right so to get down ah. all right and let's come into the middle row where uh nice very nice seats okay good support good leg room i've got I've got recline adjustment as well. This is the furthest back that it will go. So uh, I'm going to be a preach. So if you are you traveling long distance, uh, this is a pretty good place to be in. Of course, um, then the question becomes, would you prefer seven-seater arrangement or six-seater arrangement? Personally, um, if you are looking for absolute uh, people carrying capacity, seven seater here is the easy decision to make but uh if your fam if you are able to make do with six seats then i would say having two individual seats at the middle row uh it really makes the cabin feel a bit more special and especially if you take the mid plus variant with the center walkway the kids will love it all right your kids will love it and uh, we will come to the front <sighs> start the engine first lah right so you look at the middle cl the, the meter cluster first simple this was the previous gen Mazda Sky Active meter, cl meter cluster um, very le good legibility right uh, two simple analog dials speedometer tachometer then you have the third this third uh, gauge here port here that houses the multi-info display resolution of the display good resolution very nice very sharp crisp uh, image but not very fanciful so that is uh, typical Mazda style uh. they don't they like to finish the interiors classily but they don't overdo it they, they don't like to put too much um, too much bling too much flair all right and you can see here uh, this panel here you've got the power tailgate panel You've got a traction control switch, uh, engine auto start stop, and over here you can see um, a good mix of materials on the dashboard. This is soft touch, soft touch, <clears throat> a nice uh, brushed finished metal here, okay, uh, mixed with a satin chrome trim inserts here. You can see here this is the uh, aircon control panel, good switches have good quality to it. Night rotary knob, uh, nice tactile feel. So here you can see here, there's a storage tray here, rubberized, okay, useful. And what else do we have here? You've got two cup holders here, okay, two cup holders here, two motor cup holders here. This panel, nice and thick, it gives you that uh, that added feeling of class in this car. All right. So you open up here. You've got a center console, center console box. It's uh yeah, we'll store decent items, two USB ports in there. And here we have it, the uh glove box. Okay, stand uh freestanding screen, it has touch function enabled. But uh in typical Mazda uh in typical Mazda style, this the, the touch screen is disabled during du when when your car is on the move and uh I just show you the reverse camera as well so you can see compared to the mazda cx30 that i reviewed earlier this reverse camera the the sharpness is not as good so this is quite obviously um one generation behind in the mazda hierarchy and uh it 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 further reinforces why the cx the new cx30 and the new mazda 3 is as expensive as it is because uh, it really is a new, a one step up, you know, on the technological food chain compared to this uh, CX-8 and the CX-5 that's still based on the previous generation platform. Okay, uh, yeah, so here we have it, guys. This is the, inter this is the interior and exterior walk around of the CX-8. Nice, practical vehicle that is built to a high quality of finish and... Uh, and I shall move on with my driving experience.